Hey, we've made a new Persona. Get Ow! Why'd you slam the door in my face? Atlas, I told you last time, you and Persona aren't welcome here again until you've got an actual mainline installment for me. That means no spin-offs with experimental combat mechanics, no kachinko machines, and definitely, let me take a moment to pick the right swear word to emphasize this, no fanny batter fried dancing sims. Ah, but we do have an actual mainline installment this time. Do you really, Atlas? An all-new full-on hybrid JRPG dungeon crawler high school life sim with day-by-day -day scheduling, battles for the soul of humanity, and lots of getting punched out for accidentally perving on the waifus in the bath? Yes, it's all of that, and what's more, it's got a number on the end that isn't five and is a multiple of three. Holy shit, it's finally happened! Come right in, Atlas! Thank you, Yahtzee. Now please enjoy this remake of Persona 3! Ha 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 ha! God, Atlas, you packet of Kellogg's jizz flakes, tricked again. Oh well, shouldn't complain. Persona 5 and 4 are the two enormous soapy tits on the chest of my personal ideal JRPG waifu, but I've never taken the time to try three, because having played four and five and concluding that four was basically just five before it had finished baking in the oven, the impression I had of three was that it was basically that again, but before it so much as greased the cake tin, and I wasn't missing out on any mind-blowingly different experience. High school, metaphysical dungeons, perv on waifus, blah blah blah. The precise details change, but the same beats are hit, and I'm not talking about the immediate consequence of waifu perving. Even the central cast of characters draws from the same bag of archetypes as always. The slacker idiot best friend who inevitably takes the lead in perving operations, the serious boy, the posh girl, the smart girl, the girl, girl. But in 4 and 5, the central peeps were cast with a bolder emphasis and more distinct personality quirks. Three's after-school monster assassination club feel a trifle underbaked by comparison. Scoff, scoff, cry the persona purists. Clearly he didn't play far enough to unlock the ten-year-old, the dog, or the mechanical sex doll party members. I did, actually, and fun though those ideas are, it does point to a game struggling to pin down a consistent tone, and none of them are introduced with what I'd consider the necessary degree of ceremony. Your party's just like, oh, okay, a sentient robot waifu, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to see in a contemporary setting, welcome to the team. Please add your name to the perving roster. Persona 3 feels like a plot where all the important moments of discovery happened off screen while you were pissing about amusing small children in parks and eating at the restaurant that makes your face greasy. In 4 and 5 we discover the other world and our ability to fight shadows with our persona powers alongside the protagonist through mysterious intrigues and twists of fate. Meanwhile 3's protagonist, about whom we know fuck all except they've just transferred to a new city and wherever they lived before apparently had prohibitively expensive hairdressers, shows up to his new digs and some dude's there saying, hi we fight shadows with our personas and we want you to as well. Here's a starter kit of waifus who are already Persona Awakened. Oh, and that dickhead friend of yours from school just Persona Awakened too, so he's coming along. It happened just there, off screen. Shame you missed it, actually. It was really dramatic and interesting to watch. Anyway, here's a gun. Shoot yourself in the fucking face. Maybe there's something to be said for setting the scene quickly so you can get to the interesting stuff faster, but for that to work, something interesting has to happen. And Persona 3's plot doesn't start getting interesting until you're about four feet deep into it and tickling the back of its tonsils. I looked up the plot summary on Wikipedia. It's about five paragraphs long, and the first paragraph covers the first 30-odd hours of gameplay. Play. Go to school, befriend twats, go to Infinite Tower of Samey Dungeons, come home, repeat for the approximate length of a modestly sized DVD box set, and then maybe we'll unlock the fucking dog. Still, the Persona experience is enough of a comfort zone for me now that I wasn't hating it. I was content to go through the motions of progressing in the dungeon and rebuilding the usual Persona collection, acknowledging each familiar face like it was my school reunion. Hi Pixie, how's it going, Narcissus? What up, Mara? Still looking hauntingly like a bell end, I say. Word on the street is that the combat has been rehashed to be more Persona 5e. The flashy interface, the spectacular all-out attacks, the baton part which might go some way to explaining why combat gets really fucking piss easy in the back half of the game when you've got 900 superpowers to call on, but that's as much as I expect. I noticed we didn't include the way Persona 5 had you fight and recruit Personas directly, rather than have you fight a suite of gribbly monsters in order to have a chance of randomly unlocking Personas from another entirely separate suite of gribbly monsters. Always struck me as odd the way it apparently took five games to notice the obvious way they could have cut the workload in half, but that aside, this brings us back to Persona 3's aforementioned problem with consistent tone and theming, embodied by the dog the year old and the robot waifu, the father, the son, and the holy ghost. The exciting energy of Persona 5 style battles and menus feels at odds with the slightly morose tone of Persona 3's original elements, the nighttime coffins, our very depressed hairdo, oh unless we forget the fact that we summon our personas by pulling a gun and popping ourselves in the bonce. Every now and again I'd wake from a repetitive dungeon induced trance and reflect on how weird it would seem out of context, when the funky fight music kicks in and everything bops along to it for a few moments before our dude casually but determinedly beats himself in the skull. It's like an extremely ill-advised premise for a Saturday morning cartoon. Okay gang, let's summon Captain Planet by all putting our heads in this magic noose. I'm just pulling your plonk, Persona 3 Reload. Part of me likes that you're a little bit scatterbrained, if that's not an unfortunate choice of words, and yet to anyone else who got into the series from the later games, I still can't say you'd miss much by skipping this one. Whatever sparkly tinsel has been draped around it can't disguise the underbaked bits. It takes more than new wallpaper every ten levels to make samey dungeon crawling not samey. There's only three social stats and you'll probably max them out by the halfway point, so you'll have nothing to do all day but go through the somewhat uninspired array of social links, listening to boring random
commandos whine about their dead mums and their hurty legs. I nitpick now. As I said, I always enjoy Persona's gameplay model and it was hitting that G-spot, but I suppose intellectually I'm still against remaking old games to be up to date with the recent installments, much as I was with RE4, because it's erasing history for the sake of homogeneity. There's a unique value to watching the process by which a concept finds its groove. It's like the beauty of seeing a tree grow from a seed, or a blooming flower of girlhood expand to fill out her training bra, or a vibrant purple bruise slowly spreading out from your eye socket after the blooming flower of girlhood's dad shows up. <laughs>